Well, hi, and welcome to installment two of Head First JavaScript Programming Teasers. And in this installment, we're going to focus on the script element. And the script element is that main HTML piece of markup that you need to get JavaScript in your pages. And while that may sound pretty simple on the surface, there's actually a few things you should know about it. And we're also going to tackle that question of, is the head really the best place to be putting your script elements? Because while it's the most common place usually to put your script element, it might not be the best. But before we get to that topic, let's step back for a second. All right, before we dive into how to use the script element, let's make sure we totally understand it first. Now, the script element is, of course, a piece of HTML markup, and it starts with a script tag, and it's followed by a type attribute, which you set to text slash JavaScript for JavaScript code. And then, of course, we end that tag. And then everything between that and the ending script tag is code, and it's code that the browser interprets as JavaScript code. Now, not so fast, because as of the latest HTML spec, JavaScript has now been declared the official programming language for HTML. The type equals text slash JavaScript is sort of redundant. If it's, if it's the standard, well, why do we actually have to declare what it is? And the answer is, we don't anymore. And so you can just leave this off, and then this really cleans up your code just a bit. So you have script, all your code in between it, and then the ending tag. And that's all you need. Now, there's actually a second way to use a script tag, and that is instead of inlining your code between the two script tags, what you can do is you can supply a source attribute like myjavascript.js. Now, what that does is that causes the browser to go out and retrieve that JavaScript file, interpret what's in it, and include that with your page. Now, typically we use the .js file extension on these files since they are JavaScript files. And notice that we don't put any code between the script tags, yet we still have the beginning and ending script tags there. And that's really all there is to using this form of the script tag. We're just telling it what file to include, and that could be a relative file or it could be a full-blown URL. Now, one last thing, there's something you should watch out for, and that is if you try to get clever and mix both inline code and external links. And so if you have something like script with a source equal some JavaScript file, and then you try to sneak some code in there as well, this is not going to work. What actually happens ends up being browser dependent, which is a very bad thing because you don't want it working one way on one browser and one another. So just avoid this altogether. Either use each script element to include an external file or to supply inline code, but don't mix them. All right, so let's tackle this question of where you should be putting your scripts. Now, there's a couple places you can put them, and of course, our little friends here's idea is that it should definitely go on the head. We're gonna see that's not always the best choice Let's take a look at your typical HTML page. So there's a bunch of possibilities here. What we could do is we could put a script with inline code in the head of the page, and that would be just fine. We can put a script that refers to a external JavaScript file in the head as well. We could also make use of the body, and we can put either type of those script elements there too. We could put inline code in the body, or we could put a external reference to a JavaScript file there as well. Now, the thing is, we don't actually have to choose one of these. We could do all of the above. We could put some inline code in the head and then throw a script to an external JavaScript file in the body. Or we could do any combination of these at the same time. It really doesn't matter. So you don't need just one script. You can have many, and you can use any of these forms within your page. So what might drive the choice of which one you would want to use? Well, in general, best practice is to put JavaScript in an external file, particularly if you're going to be building a page or a site of any kind of complexity. That said, if you're building some type of page and you want to get some quick JavaScript in there, there's nothing really wrong with putting them in line within script elements. And a lot of times people go ahead and throw them in the head just because it's the first thing you see when you open the HTML file. It's easy to get to. It's easy to take a quick look at the top of the file and see what JavaScript sources are being included as well as what code is there. Let's talk about why that might not be a good idea. If we think about how the browser interprets your page, what it does is it starts at the very top and it works its way down. And as it hits the head and then hits script elements, let's say the script element here where we're actually going out and grabbing an external piece of JavaScript, the browser actually has to stop what it's doing. A browser is single-threaded, so it will stop, it will go retrieve that file over the network, 
It will take that file, it will parse everything that's in it and interpret those things it needs to interpret. And all this time, what's your user doing? Your user's sitting there waiting for the page to show, but the browser hasn't even hit the body of the page yet, and so there's really no content for it to show. On the other hand, if we stick our script in somewhere in the body, and preferably below the content, well, what happens then is that the browser can go ahead and paint or render some version of your page in the browser, and then it can go do that job of grabbing the scripts that it needs to display in your page. And so when we're talking about efficiency, you might want to consider putting those scripts within the body of your page and preferably at the very bottom. But when we're talking about quickly getting some pages together and just making your life easy, sure, go ahead and throw them in the head. But know what you're doing when you do that. So I've got some final thoughts for you on this topic, and that is there's one more reason why you should think about putting your scripts in the body of your pages, and that's this. This is a little ahead of where we are, but what I've got here is I've got some script with some code in it. And you'll notice here that this code references document, and that document really is your web page. And what this code is doing, and again, this is ahead of where we are, but it's grabbing an element out of your page, a specific one, the one with the ID set to sell item, and it's decorating, it's doing something with it. Now, if this script is put in the head and we execute this code, well, that doc that element in the document isn't going to exist yet because we haven't even parsed the page yet. However, if we take that same script and we put it at the bottom of the body, by the time this code runs, then that element will be set up and this code will run correctly. Again, that's a little ahead of where we are, but this is another reason that you might wanna put your scripts at the bottom of your body. So one other thing you should keep in mind, a lot of these examples are directly out of headfirst JavaScript programming, and that book is still being written. If you'd like a little closer peek at the book itself, not to mention participate in its writing, both in terms of feedback, but also getting your questions answered, then you should really join the Wickedly Smart Insiders program, which is a program we've set up to give you that access. Point your browser over to wickedlysmart.com slash jssignup for more details, and we'll see you in the next installment.